Dr. Paul Cooper, Chief of the Foot and Ankle Center here at MedStar Georgetown University Hospital. I treat all conditions involving the foot and ankle, everything from bunions and hammer toes up to major reconstructions, including total ankle replacements for ankle arthritis, uh, patients with rheumatologic conditions to sports medicine injuries, diabetes, arthritic conditions. I've been doing foot and ankle orthopedic work for over 25 years here at Georgetown for 20. The foot and ankle center that I developed here encompasses everything I believe that would make the patient's experience a unique one. The Georgetown Foot and Ankle Center was developed from the ground floor up to be a one-stop shopping concept, which is that the patient can come to one location and have both their diagnosis and whatever type of treatment they need in one setting. That way they don't have to run all over town or in various places to get the various types of devices or therapy that they may need. As soon as the patient checks in, we do an intake triage, and then after that they will have x-rays if needed, a clinical examination. We also have on-site physical therapy, durable medical goods if they need braces, a pedorthodist, which is a insert specialist and shoemaker, so that way they can get all their needs addressed with one visit. Not being able to be fully mobile is a, a great difficulty, especially in this area, for very active people. And we try and address those issues by assuring them that uh, we will achieve their maximum potential, again, both non-operatively or in some cases surgically, so that they are able to be fully mobile and functional in their day-to-day -day lives. Ankle arthritis is degeneration of the cartilage that occurs in the ankle joint. This can occur from a variety of reasons, most commonly from a traumatic event, i.e. an ankle fracture or some type of injury uh, that occurred to the ankle joint. It can occur at any age. We see uh, individuals who are still in their teens that have hemophilia that develop severe ankle arthritis. Um, not all ankle arthritis is just due to trauma. Uh, repetitive ankle sprains uh, can develop ankle arthritis also. Various rheumatologic conditions uh, can manifest even in their 30s and 40s. So ankle arthritis covers uh, the entire age span and we try to individualize the management plan based on that age and activity level and their expectations. We now live in an era where there's a, a lot of great options for ankle arthritis, ranging from non-operative management with physical therapy and various types of arthritis braces, all the way up to surgical management, involving anything from uh, cartilage transplants and replacements all the way up to artificial ankles now. Artificial ankles have now come of the, their own and can be expected to have a good survival rate and can be offered uh, to most patients. Ankle replacements or artificial ankles are basically the same concept that's used for artificial knees and in artificial hips. Namely that there's a uh, metal uh, basis or platform and in between the two pieces of metal there's a plastic spacer. Same technology. Uh, artificial ankles have now entered the third generation which means that they are uh, far more advanced and we can expect a minimum of 10 years and hopefully longer on uh, this generation of ankle replacements. Ankle replacement implants are made of actually several metals. The smooth surface that interfaces with the uh, plastic piece or spacer is made out of chrome cobalt just like in the other um, uh, joints. The backing is actually made of titanium 
and that's the surface that allows bone to grow into the implant, and that's the key to long-term survivorship. In the back of any diabetic's mind is that they're going to lose their leg. That's a um, fear that almost uniformly any diabetic has. Um, diabetics should, no matter what level or type of diabetes they have, uh, be aware of uh, how to monitor their foot, especially with any changes in shoe wear. Um, when they get any kind of blistering, any redness, or unexplained swelling, they need to be seen because these are more serious uh, potential complications that need to uh, be addressed uh, almost immediately. Diabetics develop wounds in the foot mainly because of the lack of sensation or the diminished sensation that can occur over time with their diabetes. It only takes 20 minutes inside the wrong shoe or with uh, pressure in the wrong area of the foot to develop a pressure sore or ulcer. Most diabetics uh, can actually heal their wounds. Their circulation is sufficient to uh, either undergo elective surgery or to address wound healing. Uh, more often than not, the reason that a diabetic wound might not heal is that the infection hasn't fully been eradicated that may be associated with the wound or that there's an uh, abnormal amount of pressure uh, either within the foot or within the shoe insert combination that keeps the wound from fully healing. A diabetic that does not keep their sugars balanced uh, and their overall health in check will have increased uh, risk for uh, wound, delayed wound healing. And that can have a long-term Im impact as far as also uh, greater risk for infection and other complications. It's the glycosylation of the tissues, the sugar content uh, changes the quality of the tissues and the way that the wounds heal. Probably the most common uh, injury I see here at the center is an ankle sprain. Now whether or not you're wearing three inch platform heels and you're dancing Friday night at a dance club, or you come down from a layup and you turn your ankle, the same mechanism occurs. Generally an ankle sprain should heal uh, fully within about three months. If there's continued lack of confidence on the ankle or persistent swelling, uh, after that time, that usually may uh, represent that there's another problem going on and needs to be addressed. A typical ankle sprain is defined as uh, tearing or stretching out two of the main ligaments that stabilize the outside of the ankle. However, with the same mechanism of turning your ankle in, you can pull off bone, you can fracture various bones itself. Uh, there are tendons that can be damaged around there, nerve injuries. So there's uh, dozens, if not a hundred different diagnoses that may also be made uh, for an ankle that has not healed on its own. Physical therapy is an integral part of our uh, services here, um, both in a non-operative role as well as also around the time of surgery. Very often, patients will need to be non-weight-bearing for in a period of time after surgery. If they are not comfortable with crutches, if they have balance issues, uh, preoperative therapy can be very helpful to give them the confidence and also safety for them to negotiate uh, their home environment uh, after surgery. After surgery, even though the surgery itself may only last an hour or less, uh, the recuperative time and therapy time can take months to get them back to their full potential. And that is uh, critical and an integral part of our protocols after any type of surgery. Generally, we recommend as a standard after any type of surgery involving the ankle, 
a minimum of six weeks of therapy twice a week for a total of a minimum of 12 to 14 visits. It's very important. When we uh, recommend surgery and I take you on as a patient, I expect that there's an equal share in the commitment between uh, the patient and the doctor. That means that at home or postoperatively, um, the outcome is intimately related with how much the patient puts into their therapy uh, postoperatively. If they are expecting a therapist uh, to do all the work for them, they will not uh, succeed in getting the maximum potential outcome that they could if they take some ownership and uh, work on it on themselves between therapy visits. Depends. If you're uh, having right foot surgery, uh, it's going to be a lot tougher, especially if you're uh, driving, but it all depends on the type of surgery. Some surgeries you can use your foot in as soon as two or three weeks after surgery. Others require prolonged immobilization in a cast, in which case if it is the right foot, you would not potentially be able to drive for at least a month or two. Uh, with regards to the left foot, uh, much easier, especially if you have an automatic and uh, you can drive um, as soon as two weeks after surgery for the most part. It's somewhat dependent also on what your needs are at work, whether you're standing or sitting role, how you get there from the um, uh, using public access uh, or public uh, transportation versus uh, driving yourself, the distance. So everybody's different and we have to come come up with a specific plan that works for that uh, patient and their specific needs at work. It depends on the type of surgery and depends on which leg we are performing the surgery. On the left foot, uh, it is uh, potentially uh, uh, possible as soon as two weeks after surgery. Uh, if it's a limited type of surgery to start driving. On the right foot, things get a little more complicated depending on the type of surgery. Uh, the range would be as early as three to four weeks depending on a limited foot surgery all the way up to potentially three months if it's a major uh, ankle surgery or fusion that requires uh, prolonged cast immobilization. When we talk about options for end-stage ankle arthritis, or ESSA, uh, several options are available. One is uh, to uh, fuse the bones together, called ankle fusion or ankle arthrodesis. That requires a procedure where the remaining cartilage that's in the joint is taken down, and then by methods of either using screws or plates or rods, we bolt the bones together and make them into one bone. Without there being a joint there, there can no longer be any pain since the joint drives the uh, pain that the patient was experiencing. The problem with ankle fusions are that the stress with every step you take has to go somewhere still in the leg. And if it's not going through the ankle joint, it can stress other joints around the ankle and they can over time become arthritic also. So this, uh, can develop a domino effect that over a lifetime might require additional surgeries. The other option is ankle replacement. By treating end-stage ankle arthritis but preserving motion through the ankle joint, we're restoring more of the natural function of the ankle and letting the ankle still absorb uh, the amount of stress that it would normally see and therefore potentially avoid developing the arthritis and the other problems around the other joints. Ankle fusions are still indicated for several scenarios and would be preferable over that of ankle replacement. Uh, those situations include uh, individuals that are particularly heavy, that an ankle replacement couldn't support, in the, uh, individuals that have bone loss where there's no longer the normal anatomy or architecture of the ankle joint for an ankle replacement to be placed. 
the one nice thing about the current generation of ankle replacements are that should that fail, we can always go to um, conversion to an ankle fusion but we can't do the reverse, which is take down an ankle fusion and get expect a successful ankle replacement. Much more difficult. Orthotics are a device that's placed inside the shoe, and the main goal of the orthotics is to address a structural or biomechanical abnormality. Uh, I would say that it's one of our uh, most commonly prescribed uh, devices here and we use it for a wide range of problems including runners who may have um, some subtle problems or alignment issues all the way up to realigning flat feet uh, helping with arthritic conditions and there's all so sorts and types of orthotics that are done by a certified pedorthodist or CPED. Uh, once we have evaluated you and felt that an orthotic is indicated, we have on site a, a pedorthodist that has a digital scanner and can simply scan your foot right on site, send the digital file, and have the orthotic made in a lab off site. Typical times for turnaround for orthotics can be uh, anywhere from two to four weeks. One of the most frustrating uh, scenarios that we see are women that come in that have advanced bunion deformities or advanced clotho deformities and have not had it addressed because their medical professional told them that, quote unquote, you never get your foot operated on or you never, you wait until you're uh, old and then you try orthopedic shoes to fit. Uh, we've come a long way with regards to uh, bunion understanding bunions and claltos, such that uh, the philosophy now is to intervene early and do a simpler procedure if necessary and put you on the right pathway rather than let this uh, deformity grow over time and become much more complicated. So I think the paradigm needs to change where early intervention and assessment is uh, really the most important thing for someone with bunions, claw toes, hammer toes. A bunion, uh, simply put, is where the big toe drifts uh, to the outside of the foot. And the prominence that you see can turn red if irritated. So bunion comes from the old uh, Greek word bunio for redness or turnip. And that is the uh, redness that you see, and that's why it was called bunion years ago. Um, generally what happens is, whether it's from shoe wear or a congenital bunion deformity, uh, people who are double jointed, there's multiple reasons why bunions can drift over and develop, uh, but they all need to be individually assessed and uh, come up with an individual treatment program. Often surgery can address bunions, and the surgeries are fairly uh, straightforward now. In the old days, bunion procedures were major surgeries that took hours with patients uh, in the hospital for four days or more. Now bunion surgeries take less than 15 minutes for the most part and it are performed as an outpatient uh, setting. Claw toes and hammer toes are variations on what happens to the lesser toes. By lesser toes, everything other than the big toe, two, three, four, and five toes. And essentially it's a curling of the toe. And uh, to the degree that it curls, uh, it becomes more difficult with balance as well as shoe wear since the um, uh, upper end of the uh, toe will rub against the shoe and become red and uh, in some rare cases infected. So for those reasons, it becomes increasingly difficult to be able to find proper shoe wear to wear and uh, to use comfortably on a day-to-day -day basis. As a rule of thumb, uh, I only operate on one side at a time. 
I have found that in cases, rare cases that we operate on both sides, the outcomes are not quite as good because the patient has no good foot, so to speak, to weight bear on and cannot focus on the rehabilitation and recuperation on just one foot. So I think in this case, when operating on both sides, uh, one plus one equals three in complexity as opposed to just being additive as uh, two separate feet. Whichever side has either the most pain discomfort or more of an impending problem. There are unique problems that develop in the second toe after a bunion progresses that are more time urgent and if that develops that should be uh, addressed initially since that can be somewhat time sensitive.